Hello, I'm Twinson, the hero of this adventure. Little Big Adventure 2, also known as Twinson's Odyssey, was released in 1997, three years after its prequel. It was made by the same team, Adeline Software International, and it becomes very clear that they love this game series. In my opinion, all the aspects of the game have been improved over the first one. Just like the first game, it's an action-adventure game with some puzzle elements. But instead of the isometrical world of LBA1, this game takes place in full 3D. Only the insides of buildings are in the old style. It feels a lot more open than the first game. Twinson also had a graphical upgrade. His character model has been improved and actually has eyes now. In the English version, his voice is now done by David Gasman, the same voice actor as Rayman. Hello! After the events of Little Big Adventure 1, where you save the planet Twinson from destruction and release the people of the tyranny of the evil dictator Dr. Frontrock, you and your wife Zoe, who is now pregnant by the way, are having a great time when suddenly a heavy storm breaks out. While you run through your house, your old and trusty dino buddy, Dinofly, gets struck by lightning and crashes in your garden. Your first task in the game is to treat Dinofly. At the local pharmacy, they don't have anything for your injured friend. But a customer tells you to go to a wizard on Desert Island, who can treat almost everything, even a Dinofly. And so begins a long series of fetch quests. Because of the weather, the ferry won't set sail. And to stop the storm, you have to speak with a weather wizard. Yup. The weather wizard. But he can't do his magic without access to the lighthouse. But the only one with the key is Ralph, the lighthouse keeper, who has gone missing. And so your adventure takes you to the cliffs and you find yourself in a cave, leading to a dead end. To lift the blockade, you need to hit a switch. But your magic ball can't reach it. What to do now? The reason is because you can't store any magic yet. You need your old tunic back, which you gave to the museum. Yes, it's a museum dedicated to you, but you still have to pay admission though. But an open window will do just fine. You press some buttons and get your tunic back. You return to the cave, throw your magic ball against the switch and the door opens. And as you go further into the cave, you encounter ugly big rat creatures that spit at you. Kinda gross, but after you beat them, you get a key and unlock a door. But what's up next? It's an oversized rat! And he spits a lot more than his smaller friends and attacks you with his tail! These kinds of boss fights are a lot more common in LBA2 than they were in the first game. And I really like the designs of these monsters. After you defeat him and Ralph is saved, you meet up with an angry Zoe, who somehow got all the way past the dangerous cliffs, all while being pregnant. Without getting angry at the irresponsible behavior of his wife, Sweet Twinson takes her back home and all seems good again. While walking back, you can control both Twinson and Zoe as a couple. And what other game lets you control a couple like that? But your quest is not done yet. You go to the lighthouse where the weather wizard performs his magic. And while the storm settles down, flying saucers make their way to the planet. Who are they? What are they doing here? And most importantly, what do they want? The whole quest to get the storm to disappear was just an introduction to the rest of the game. Shortly after these weird creatures called Esmers have landed, the children and different kinds of wizards on Twinson disappear. And it's up to you to save your planet again. From this moment on, the game takes you on a journey across not only your own planet, Twinson, but also a planet called Seelish and a moon called the Emerald Moon. It seems to me that back then, game developers were not afraid to use their creative talents. If you watch the making of of Little Big Adventure 2, it becomes obvious that the team is very passionate about this game. Their computer systems were very limited and 3D game engines were fairly new. And this resulted in a lot more experiments. They had to use the maximum capacity of these machines just to create the best experience possible. The improvements of LBA2 are quite obvious. There's a whole lot more to explore and it feels more like a Zelda game. Unlike the prequel, where you could only visit the islands of Twinson, you can now only visit Citadel Island and Desert Island. But they are much bigger and feel more alive, mostly because of the well-animated characters. Some of the characters have a long animation cycle, so you can watch them for a long period of time and it will seem like they have a life on their own. You will also visit another planet, Zeelish, which is covered in gas. Below the gas, there are a lot of islands surrounded by an ocean of lava. I think the creators really show their imagination with the design and backstory of this planet. There are a lot of activities you can do. For example, 
visit Oteringal and waste your time gambling at the slot machines, bidding on racing dogs and some sort of minigame involving letting a rat creature fall down a hole. Under the gas there's an island I really like called the Island of the Muscovies. It has an awesome music theme and the graphical art style is very charming. And then you have the Emerald Moon. One side faces the planet of Twinson, and it looks like a normal green moon. But there's a moon base built on the other side. When you're there, you walk around in a spacesuit, which looks pretty badass. Why? Because it comes with a special feature. Shooting lasers from your nipples! The controls haven't changed much from the original. Twinson has the same tank controls and behavior modes. In the first game you could only talk, search and activate buttons in normal mode. But now it doesn't matter in which mode you are because they assigned the action to the Z button. This really comes in handy because it speeds up the gameplay. By pressing X you can now dodge enemy attacks in every mode. This really helps with the combat which was a pain in the first game. You can dodge in every direction and it looks pretty awesome. While playing the game, I discovered that a lot of the sound effects are pretty common in other things. For example, I recently saw an episode of an old child TV show called Lamp Chops Play Along, and I heard several sounds from Little Big Adventure. Way back as a child, I played this game first, before discovering that it was actually a sequel. It doesn't really matter that much if you'd like to start with this one, but I do recommend you first play LBA1, just to know why Twinson is such an important figure in the world. I enjoyed this game more than LBA1, not only because it was my first, but also because the characters and the world around you look more cheerful, which I find very charming. This underrated game and its prequel can be bought on goodoldgames.com. It's a unique experience that you will never find anywhere else. Thanks for watching my review. I would like to hear your opinion about this video. Or maybe tell me about your experiences with this game. Was it part of your childhood? Or are you planning to play it for the first time? So please leave a comment and share your stories. I also reviewed LBA1. So if you want to watch it, click on the box in the video or find the link in the description.